Hello, and welcome to the third section of our course, the section on inductive arguments. We will start with moral arguments. Now, I want to give you an overview of our class in order to situate this section of our, our uh, class within the, the whole. And then I want to give you an introduction to morality by talking about value judgments. All right, here's an overview of our class. The structure of our class is as follows. One, introduction to reasoning. Two, propositional logic. Three, induction uh, with moral arguments and analogical arguments as the focus. And then four, informal fallacies. So in the introduction to reasoning, we learned about statements and arguments and how to distinguish them from other uses of language. And we learned the difference between deductive and inductive arguments and the various properties for each, such as validity, soundness, strength, and cogency. In our section on propositional logic, we talked about, uh, we learned a method for proving whether a given deductive argument is valid or invalid. That was the truth table method. Now we'll go into some depth on inductive arguments, and we'll start with moral arguments. Okay, here's an outline of our section on moral arguments. We'll talk about value judgments, moral theories, the naturalistic fallacy, the structure of moral arguments, and analogies in moral arguments. First, let's talk about value judgments, the focus of this lecture. There's a difference between a factual claim and a value judgment. A factual claim is non-evaluative. It doesn't carry any value with it. It doesn't carry any sort of claim about the importance or significance of the, of the claim. So penguins are birds. Water is H2O. These are non-evaluative. There's no, there's no implication of value in the claim that penguins are birds or water is H2O. It's just a, it's a matter of fact, a statement of, of fact. Then you have value judgments. This is a claim that a particular human action or object has some degree of importance, worth, or desirability. It could be something as simple as, ice cream tastes great. Or something as serious as, it's morally wrong to kill innocent people for fun. Now, the claim that ice cream tastes great is a, a sort of subjective claim about, uh, about you, what value you place on uh, ice cream, or at least the taste of ice cream. You like it, okay? but you're not making any sort of claim about um, what other people might value. Now, it's a good question regarding the second one. Whether this is purely a subjective statement, it's morally wrong to kill innocent people for fun, or whether it's a claim about what's right or wrong for any human being in all of history. In claiming that uh, you know value judgments are, are distinct from factual judgments, I'm not necessarily saying that uh, value judgments are not factual. It's a matter of fact that ice cream tastes great. It's a well, I would say, if, um, I hope you would say, it's a matter of fact that um, it's morally wrong to kill innocent people for fun. When we say it's a matter of fact that ice cream tastes great, we, at the very least, we mean, say that it's coming from David. At the very least, we mean ice cream tastes great for David. Okay, there are di different types of value judgments. Their uh, personal taste or uh, um, personal taste or value judgments of personal taste or value. These statements uh, assert one's per personal tastes or values. So I like ice cream. Running is important to me. You're, you're saying something about what you value, um, about what your personal tastes are. You're not making any sort of claim about other people. I, I might like running, but I'm not claiming you have to like running. I might like ice cream, but I'm not claiming that you have to like ice cream. So they're um, value judgments that are based purely on personal taste or value. Then there are moral judgments. These are, uh, assert that human actions are good, bad, right, or wrong. For example, killing for fun is morally wrong. 
truth telling is good. Now it's a, um, an interesting question to ask whether all moral judgments boil down to judgments of personal taste or preference or value. So do moral judgments boil down to judgments of personal taste or value? Well, um, to say that uh, moral judgments just boil down to personal taste is to say that something like killing for fun is morally wrong. It's just a matter of your personal taste. I, I hope that it's not simply a matter of your personal taste, that killing for fun is morally wrong, so that if Jack finds it distasteful to kill for fun and, and uh, John finds it tasteful, artistic maybe, to kill for fun, well, um, I can hope that we would say one is just seriously wrong in claiming that um, it's seriously misguided in thinking that killing for fun is, is tasteful. So I'm not here to settle the debate, just to raise the issues. But there is a difference between issues of personal taste or value and moral judgments. Okay. There's a distinction as well between subjective statements and objective statements. For a subjective statement, the truth of these statements depends solely on a person's subjective state, her feelings, her preferences, beliefs. The example we've been using is this one. Ice cream is the best. So the truth of that, is if Mary claims that ice cream is the best, the truth of that depends solely on how she feels about ice cream, how ice cream tastes to her, her beliefs about ice cream. And it's not really some, uh, you know, some feature out there in the world, some fact about ice cream that it's the best. Now it could be that ice cream really is the best, um, but uh, that would be something, I think, that would be something like everyone agrees that ice cream is the best. Um, although there also could be, you know, sort of objective features about ice cream and the way that they impact, you know, the human taste bud and um, then uh, the way the brain fires up such that, you know, like um, the, the properties of ice cream have this particular impact on human beings. So, you know, there might be something objective about it after all. Um, but, you know, uh, ice cream is the best is typically given as a prime example of um, sort of a subjective truth, a truth that depends solely on a person's subjective state. Now, a, an objective truth um, does not depend on anyone's beliefs, preferences, desires, etc., but on the nature of uh, mind-independent reality. So, ice cream typically has sugar. Now, if Susan thinks that ice cream has no sugar, she's just wrong. If Susan claims that ice cream is not the best and Jack claims that ice cream is the best, they can both be right about it because Susan's claiming ice cream is not the best for her. Jack is claim claiming ice cream is the best for him. There's no sort of contradiction there, no genuine disagreement. Um... But when it comes to ice cream typically has sugar, if Susan says, you know, for me, ice cream does not have sugar, that's my truth, or something like that, um, well, she's just wrong. Um, the truth of the matter depends on something that's out there in the world, depends on the nature of uh, mind-independent reality rather than on, I don't know the name of the person, Susan, Susan's subjective states. Even if she believes that ice cream does not have sugar, that doesn't show that ice cream uh, does not have sugar. Um, it just means that her belief is false. So what do you think? Of course, we can't have an, you know, a discussion here. I just want to raise the question. Um, moral claims like telling, truth-telling is good are just expressions of personal taste, much like the claim vanilla ice cream is the best. There is nothing objectively right or wrong about these claims. The preceding claim is what? Would you say true or false? Let me give a little more explanation. So, in saying that a moral claim like truth-telling is good is just an expression of personal taste, uh, much like 
vanilla ice cream is the best is an expression of personal taste. You're saying that there's nothing really more to morality than sort of reporting our personal taste or um, when I make a claim that truth telling is good, I'm just giving my personal taste, but I'm not saying, you know, that, that uh, this is true for everyone. I'm just saying, like, vanilla ice cream is the best. That doesn't mean that you can't like chocolate, that you can't think chocolate is the best. Um, so it's like uh, truth telling is good. Well, that's my personal taste. Um, doesn't mean that you can't think lying is good in the same circumstances in which I think truth telling is good. So what do you think, you know? Are moral claims more like personal taste, or are they more like objective claims about the nature of reality? Something to think about. Okay, now one final distinction. Moral value judgments often employ two types of statements, prescriptive statements and normative statements. So a prescriptive statement offers advice. So an example is, you shouldn't do that. Right, like if uh, my child wants to run across the street and I say, hey, you shouldn't do that. Well, first of all, maybe I should command her, don't do that. But if I'm just saying you shouldn't do that, I'm sort of giving advice, right? Or maybe a better example would be like um, your your brother-in-law wants to invest in a particular stock and you, you're an expert on um, investments and you say, you know, you shouldn't invest in that stock. What you're doing is you're offering advice on what he should or shouldn't do. It's not there. It's not a moral sort of claim. It, it's more like a, a practical claim or pragmatic claim. Well, if you do that, it's going to have negative a negative impact on your finances. A normative claim establishes standards for correct moral behavior. A normative claim off, establishes standards for correct moral behavior. Example would be killing is always wrong. Now, prescriptive claims can be moral claims. So you might say for a prescriptive, prescriptive claim, well, you, you know, you, I don't think you should um, steal. I don't think you should steal from that store. And you mean that if you, what you mean is that if you steal, you, you'll have done something morally wrong. So a prescriptive claim offers advice. A normative claim establishes standards for correct moral behavior. So that's it. Just try to get trying to get some distinctions on the table when it comes to, you know, um, moral arguments.